I had a question about how I'm going to insulate my shipping container and how I'm going to combat mold. So I thought we'd talk about that today, as well as a little carnivore topic down at the end of the video. Hello everyone, semi-retired Bob here. The off-grid carnivore. I talk about the carnivore diet, all things related to the carnivore diet, miscellaneous odds and ends, as well as I'm inviting you along to join my journey as I prepare to move off-grid in Texas. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for stopping by. What you're watching right now is you're watching me walk. The interesting thing about that, a little over two years ago, I couldn't do this. I could barely stand for a couple minutes without severe pain. Now I'm not only out here walking every day, I'm getting ready to move off grid in Texas. If you're returning to the channel, welcome back. It means a lot to me that you spend just a few moments of your day with me. I would like to ask everyone to help me out just a little bit. Go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Drop down in the comments and say hi Bob. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. All these things are absolutely free and help me get the word out that it's never too late to change your life. I'm 61 years old and I'm doing things I couldn't do when I was 40. Like out here walking every day. You may notice I'm going a slightly different route today. I started off with that smaller hill that goes straight up out of my driveway. I just haven't been up this way for a while and because of Professor K and all of the other people that I follow, I pushed really hard going up that hill yesterday. So I'm not going to go push up that hill today. I'm just going to do a regular walk and we're going to talk about my shipping container and how I'm going to insulate it and hold down mold. Let's talk about mold first. I don't think it's going to be a real problem because the section of desert I'm moving to, a really high humidity day is about 30%. I'm moving to a very dry section of the desert. But just in case, I am going to install not huge vents. Basically, about six inch size vents. I'm gonna put two old computer sized fans on low vents. Setting those to suck air in from the bottom. They're doing a lot of work up there. I guess this was a bad idea. Let's go back the other way. I guess I'll go up here and go around the block that way. But put a couple of small vents along the bottom with little tiny fans. Just little small ones like computer fans that won't use but an amp or two of power a day. Set those to pull air in and put another couple of them up by the ceiling going the other way, pushing air out. And that should keep the circulation flowing. But the main thing I'm going to do to maximize my living space and I'll be able to see the inside walls if some mold is forming is I'm going to insulate it from the outside. I'm not going to put any insulation inside the shipping container because I'm going to build a big rain roof over top of the thing to of course collect rainwater but it will also keep the weather off of it so I don't have to do 
as good a job of sealing things up as somebody that would, you know, like put siding on your house to keep the rain off the insulation. What I'm planning on is, of course, in the foundation. I'm not putting a big foundation in. I'm going to dig about a five inch deep trench that's eight feet wide and 40 feet long, the size of the shipping container. I'm only I'm going to dig down about five inches. And then I'm going to put about two inches of gravel down, pack it into place. Then I'm going to cover that with plastic and add another three inches of gravel on top of that and pack all that into place. And with that little bit of a plastic barrier, if there is any moisture that gets underneath the shipping container, that should make it drain away and not leach up into the floor. Then on the outside, probably just use standard fiberboard of some sort. You know, just an inch and a half, two inch board of insulation around the outside. And then I'll leave an air gap of about a half an inch. And then I'm planning on putting earth bags. This is gonna be a combination of regular building materials and natural building materials. I'm going to put earth bags all the way around the outside, up the walls, to provide thermal mass. So that, yes, it will hold heat some in the summer, but it will also hold heat in the winter. And if I use, you know, about a 12 inch wide bag, that'll give me 12 inches of basically dirt insulation on the outside of it on top of the air gap and the insulation board and then for the roof because I'm going to have that rain roof over top of it before I do anything else I'm planning on just filling the space between the top of the shipping container and the bottom of the rain roof with straw bales. And then I'll spray those straw bales down with mud slip, which is basically just muddy water. And that should help keep the bugs out of it. And I won't have to worry too much about it because the rain roof is going to keep rain off of everything. Then I'm going to go from there, see what happens. I'm planning on a small propane heater for the coldest nights of the winter. And I'm planning on a, uh, a small mini split air conditioner at some point for the summer. And I'll have to add vents in for that and what I'm hoping is that I can make the uh, the earth bag wall solid but because there's going to be an air gap when I run vents out the side of the house I'm hoping that there's enough space to let whatever I'm venting out actually get out through the air gap between the insulation board and the earth bags. We'll see how it goes. I mean, if you're looking to me for advice on how to build stuff, we're gonna have quite the journey together because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of making it up as I go. But that's my basic plan for insulation and mold control. Like I said, there really shouldn't be any mold problems because 
my section of the Texas desert is so dry. Only averages about 12 to 12 and a half inches of rain a year. And most of that comes down in a month and a half. So we'll see what happens. Either way, it's going to be fun. I'm still deciding between living in my trailer and putting up a portable garage type thing for taking everything out of the trailer in, or because they're about the same price, I may get a big wall tent and actually move into the tent and use the trailer as storage. I haven't completely made up my mind on that yet, but we'll see how it goes. I still have about a month and a half to finish making all these decisions. But I think I've talked enough. I do have a little bit of a carnivore conversation with you. We're going to talk about side effects of drugs and what it means when we get back to the house. But for now, I'm just about back up to my street, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera around, let you see where I'm walking to. You'll, be, you'll see as I come up to this first intersection and turn, that's normally where I, when I go around the big block, I came up that hill and turn to the right. Now I'm coming from the other direction and I'll turn to the left. But let's go ahead and cue the music.
So here we are back at the house. Let's go ahead and talk about side effects for just a minute. If you're taking a drug and you're feeling a side effect from it, that side effect is your body's warning to you that it's being poisoned. Now some of them we can't do much about until we get completely off the meds that we're taking. But I would suggest to you if you're having severe side effects from a certain medication, ask your doctor rather than prescribing more drugs to counter the side effects, I would ask your doctor if there's a different drug you can try in hopes of alleviating some of the side effects. Now obviously the goal at some point is to get off most of our medication. As you all know, I don't take any medication anymore and I took 13 pills in the morning and 9 at night plus pain pills throughout the day. But not everybody can get rid of all of their medications. So if you're taking one and you're still having side effects, please talk to your doctor or do some research online to see if there isn't perhaps some other drug that you can take that will do what you need it to do without the side effects or less side effects. That's my carnivore thought for today, folks. Hopefully some of what I said today made sense. I hope you enjoyed this quick little video. Don't forget, get out there. Be 1% better. Today, tomorrow, every day. Have a great day, folks. I'll see you in the next one.